Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk about something that was introduced in Fallen Kingdom. Towards the beginning of the film, Eli Mills brings Claire Deering into the Lockwood Manor and goes over the history of the cloned dinosaurs. In the film, he states that before the islands, Isla Sorna, and Jurassic Park, Hammond and Lockwood used this facility to extract the first DNA from Amber. He also mentions that Benjamin Lockwood is extremely interested in protecting what's left of the Nublar dinosaurs by organizing a rescue mission that would safely ferry them away away from the island's imminent destruction. This new location that would be used to help secure the dinosaur's future was dubbed the Sanctuary Island, and it's even shown off in an elaborate display that Lockwood has put together for the Claire Deering pitch. If we take a look at this island, we can see that it looks radically different to any other island that we've seen before in the Jurassic Park movie canon. The characters comment on how this piece of land is fully self-sustaining and protected by natural barriers that will prevent any tourists from getting in, as well as any dinosaurs from getting out. However, it is later revealed in the film that the entire mission to successfully relocate the animals was nothing more than an elaborate lie, and that in truth, Eli Mills was planning to take the dinosaurs to the mainland the whole time. It's for this very reason that the aforementioned Sanctuary Island has been called into question, and several Jurassic fans have been left wondering on whether or not we'd ever get to see it again. During its introduction, Benjamin Lockwood states that they have created a sanctuary. Whether or not this means that the island is man-made is still up for debate, but he does make it seem like most of the location was created naturally through normal causes. Since Lockwood's intentions were definitely sincere in Fallen Kingdom, we're led to believe that he really does want to fulfill John Hammond's dream that we all saw play out on national television at the end of The Lost World, which means the sanctuary more than likely does belong to him, or it's a piece of land that he has at the very least recently acquired for his estate. The entire goal of the location was heralded as a gift that the old man wanted to give to children, specifically his reborn daughter who loved dinosaurs, Maisie. So, one of the most interesting aspects of the Sanctuary Island, in my personal opinion, has to be its overall shape. If you look at the way the landmass is presented in Benjamin Lockwood's diagram, you'll see that it forms this nice crescent shape that's almost like a little moon. Well, here's where things get really interesting, because this particular island shape might just have some connections with an aspect from Jurassic Park's past that predates the Los Cinco Mortes lore that came about in The Lost World. If we go back to the original Michael Crichton novel, we get information on additional Jurassic Parks that John Hammond was planning to open all around the world. Apart from Isla Nublar, sites like Jurassic Park Europe and Jurassic Park Japan were also briefly discussed. You can even see evidence for them existing during the lunch scene in the first movie. Well, the location of Jurassic Park Europe is really what I want to talk about here, because I think it's quite possible that the Sanctuary Island may in fact be a reference to that very location. In case you didn't know, John Hammond had plans of opening up Jurassic Park to European visitors in the Azores Islands. And as it turns out, one of those islands happens to share a remarkably similar shape to that of Lockwood's Sanctuary. Of course, this real-life location seems rather small in comparison to the wide-reaching ranges of Isla Nublar. However, Fallen Kingdom does state that the intention was only to save 11 species from destruction. So, while this definitely wouldn't be a dinosaur-packed location to say the least, it's entirely possible that it could have been the place that Lockwood intended to take the animals. Now, I say all of this without addressing the big elephant in the room. And that's the fact that all of the speculation relies heavily on whether or not the Sanctuary Island even exists. During the entire first act of the film, the debate on whether or not the public should save the animals resulted in a lot of controversy. Was Ronnie Global was said to be in a really bad place financially after the fall of Jurassic World, and it doesn't seem like they would have been capable of helping the animals in any serious way. The United States government, however, 
was actually in the process of debating on whether or not they should relocate them. Whether their idea of sanctuary would have been Site B or possibly some other location was never spoken on screen. But had it not been for Ian Malcolm convincing them not to, they probably would have gone ahead and done it. Enter Eli Mills, who was the first man that tells us all about this wonderful dinosaur reserve that he had hopes of taking the animals to. It's here where we not only get information about the sanctuary island, but also where we hear him tell his first lies. Mills tells Claire that the reason she's been summoned to the Lockwood estate is because they need her handprint to locate Blue. We're led to believe that they don't really have the tech to get into the Jurassic World system successfully, but Miss Deering most certainly does. However, later on, Owen states that Lockwood's flunkies had already contacted him before Claire ever took him to the bar. And once Grady's initial plans of relocating Blue go sideways, Ways, it's revealed that things aren't exactly going the way our protagonists thought they would. In truth, Mills had equipment to access Jurassic World systems from the very beginning. We even see his men successfully open up the Mosasaurus gate in order to retrieve a rib bone from the Indominus. He even states later on in the movie himself that he was sorry he lied to Claire, but it was the only way they could get what they needed. No Claire, no Owen, no Indoraptor Project. I just wanted to come and apologize. I didn't want to bring you into any of this, but it was the only way that we could get the rapture. We needed it. So if he's able to lie so easily and expertly to those around him, is it really too much of a stretch to believe that he also lied to Lockwood about there even being a sanctuary in the first place? Think about it. This is the guy that was running all of Lockwood's assets after all, and the one that was entrusted to move his fortune into the future. So I don't think it's out of the question for us to assume that if he was slimy enough to kill a man and construct a false narrative in order to secure seed money, he may certainly be capable of convincing a dying man that this island even exists. Benjamin Lockwood talks about seeking redemption for the wrongs he's done in the past. And what better way to play the old man like a fool than telling him that by stealing the Nublar dinosaurs and relocating them to this incredible sanctuary, that he'd be fulfilling his old business partner, John Hammond's dreams. In reality, it all comes down to what we see happen on screen in the actual film. And since we're never given any concrete evidence as to whether or not this location is a real place, I don't think we can really say that it is in all honesty just yet. Don't get me wrong, it's entirely possible that it's a place that Lockwood really owned in the film canon. However, since we don't get to see it, I'm not holding my breath on its validity. The entire lie that Mills constructed in Fallen Kingdom was made to specifically get the animals away from Nublar and into the hands of black market buyers who Mills would trade to them for money. So in my opinion, real or not, the sanctuary was simply a means to an end. Interestingly, Jurassic World Evolution has actually just released some new DLC where Claire completes her mission of taking some of the dinosaurs there. And while that's obviously an alternate reality, I'd recommend that for anyone that's interested in following up on what this place could, in theory, have had to offer. But hey, those are all just my own thoughts on the subject matter. What do all of you guys think? Do you believe that the Sanctuary Island is a real place that Lockwood owned? Or do you believe it to just be another lie that was created by Eli Mills? I'm leaning more in that direction, but I'll admit that it's kind of hard to tell at this particular point. But hey, whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Guys, it seriously means the world to me that you all even continue to watch these videos. And I want to thank each and every one of you for all of your continued support. Now, I'd like to thank all of you for watching this video and hope you all enjoy today's content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you on the next one, guys. And as always, take it easy.